Welcome to the biggest influences. This is the re and we're just not going to do that. So yeah. so we've made that decision. It, and it, Twitter is doing that. For Twitter's Germany? doing that. Yeah, Twitter and, and, so and they're Germany, also doing it with India. Really? Yeah. So if India posts something negative about the government, the government could say, "Take this down." Yep. And Twitter will take Twitter it down. has these interstitials, like so, like kind of different content policies on different states, and with, so Pakistan, you know, there's basically a different Twitter in all of these different countries is that because it's the only way they can be on in i mean those that's countries? the argument is in in that but it's the same argument that you know google goes through when they're like should we go to china we want to go to china we have this dragonfly project are we going to you know let's, let's work on them behind the scenes what is dragonfly it's like google's a, i you know, i i I'm, don't know all the details but it's their kind of china uh project their their, their project to get google accessible in china and have it be okay with the government I was uh, friends with someone who was an executive at Google back in the day, and what she described to me was that if they didn't, and they were in negotiation and doing business with China, and she said, if we don't do this, they're just going to copy it. They're basically mm -hmm. just going to rip off Google. And so we're in this battle to either appease them with their rules and, and, and have it go over there and have you know some things like Tiananmen Square be censored. Where you can't access information about Tiananmen Square, and it's just like, well, it seems to be a situation where we kind of have to do that, or they're just going to copy Google. Yeah, I don't think that that's just a game that we're not interested in playing. I think that we're just going to stick to the laws that we're required to obey, and if other countries are going, I mean, we've been banned in China, we've been banned in Vietnam. We had a huge wave of like, this was one of our largest, we got like half a million users in like two days from Vietnam because there was a revolving door between their government and Facebook. And, you know, the, the journalists of Vietnam found out and we, we got this huge wave. And then mm. short, shortly after, Vietnam banned us. Um, and, but, you know, they, people still can use v VPNs at their own risk there. I just feel like it's a losing battle, constantly catering to all of these different countries and their censorship laws. It feels like just sort of a waste of time. And you can we can bypass all that with decentralized protocols. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but I, I, I get it. It's, it's not easy, especially when, you know, a company could go bankrupt. And if you, you know, if, if you lose all your German users, you know, if Twitter gets banned in India, like that's a major pro We're not dependent on those users. So, and I appreciate that you're yeah. not independent. I think what you do is very important, and I'm glad you're out there. I really am, and I'm glad there's this option. And I'm glad you guys have these like rock solid ethics in regards to that. It's just, it's very important. And it's, I wonder like at scale, if it's like if Minds, if we come back and do another podcast in two years and Minds now has 50 million or 100 million. Let's make that happen. You're like what happens then? And is my, I, I have to be honest, I only got on Minds a couple times after you gave me uh, a You know login. what's funny? You know your your first time sharing Minds? No. It was in like 2009 or – no, maybe like 2011. And you shared this viral video that was going on on Minds of this like quantum levitation disc – Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's like if you look on, on – if you just search like quantum, you know, superconducting levitation mm -hmm. <laughs> and you had just seen that and, you know, this was way before we knew each other and you had just shared that. So it's you sure it's me? I'm almost positive. I'm, yeah. Cause, I bet cause, it's cause, not. No, I had friends message me. They were like, dude, Rogan just I shared this I bet it's not. Video. Really? Yeah. I bet it's a fake me. No. I think you got duped. Really? Let's go look at it. See can we, can find, we it. find it on your Twitter? Find yeah, how is it? How would it be me? No, because you just shared a link to a video. You didn't know. You, you just oh, thought. You just so thought, I shared it on Twitter. You shared it on Twitter. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, you weren't on. You weren't a user. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I shared this thing, and the shing, this thing originated on Minds, and then it boosted Minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How many it, was views just, it was just like one of those like crazy levitation videos where it's just like, what the hell is going on? Like mm. this magnet is just levitating. <laughs> right, right, right. That sounds like something I would post. Yeah. Um, so like what is like what's do you have like the number one post ever on minds? Like how many people does it reach? Um, I mean, we yeah, we have 
We have posts that have hit oh, probably over a million views. And is it because someone's sharing it on other social media networks like I did? Yep, for sure. Yeah, and that's what's so malicious about these algorithms getting clamped down is that, you know, everyone's in, in survival mode. Now. Right. And even Twitter doesn't – what we learn from the algorithm is that the link – you know, links are punished. All links. If you post a link on Twitter, it's get, it's not getting – elevated in the algorithm and that is because they want to keep people on twitter really yeah and we always speculated this because you can just tell you post and the reach of of posts with links is is way down and so we have historically have obviously used that i mean the problem is that for the way that big tech emerged there was nothing else there was nothing to throttle them right so now they can just throttle competition by not allowing links to outside sites to be um, elevated. Mm -hmm. They have. I'm not saying they don't have the right to do it, but I think that it's just it's just not helpful for the open web. I think that people need to be able to post links and not get punished for it. Yeah, for sure. I didn't know that that was even a thing. Yep, that's one of the things we learned. You know, obviously they're they're favoring native video, native content. They're mm -hmm. fav favoring Twitter Blue, which is again some of it's some of it makes sense, but you know. Don't don't piss off the journalists. It's not a, no, not it doesn't good. make sense. Yeah. It's not smart. But the link thing is really weird. So uh, I, I could understand encouraging people to post links, but how would you do that? And then I I don't I mean not encouraging people to post links, but per posting it native. I can understand that that you'd want like just put the whole article on Twitter or just put this on Twitter. Yeah, and it is a better experience typically to use the native functions of the app. It's smoother. It right. looks better. But... but it's so easy to just say, uh, you know, like if I find something interesting on YouTube, uh, oftentimes I will just say, oh, that's a fascinating video. Let mm -hmm. me just post that real quick. Yep. And then the problem with that sometimes is it posts it with the clickbait headline, you know, and then people think it's yours, that mm -hmm. you're saying that, you know, libs get owned, you know, like that kind of shit. Yeah, like, one word, two, two of the words in caps. Yeah, so now I'm like, <laughs> ah, fuck. Well, maybe I should, like, post yeah, but, it but put my own thing on it instead of... Right, but, like, you don't want to have... If you want to share a video from YouTube... You don't, be click, click, well, you click. don't want to have to download the video and then upload it. Like, first of all, no. you can't do that. You're not supposed right. to do that. <laughs> right. So... The only way to do that is to screen capture it. Yeah. Or get an app that, the that Ripper. downloads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, the, all the sites do that. I mean, we, we, when we were first starting, we, because we have like over a million followers on our Facebook pages, and we would drive crazy traffic back in the day, just posting viral videos and cool articles. And, you know, we had journalists on and we would post their stuff. And we would, so much traffic, like, you know, millions and millions of, of users a month hitting the site. And then Facebook was just like, and then mm. boom. And, you know, but we always knew that we didn't want to be, you know, it was a nice to have thing. Right. So we, it, the reason we do what we do is because we didn't want to be relying on them. But it just goes to show how much power they have. I mean, they can literally wipe out jobs and people's livelihoods and companies just overnight. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. You know, if you're not favored and you don't play the algorithm game, it's just me. It's so sickening and like worrying about the algorithm. It's like people are just worship this thing and you kind of have to for survival because yeah. you're trying to succeed. But then, you know, what are you really spending your time doing? It's an interesting uh, discussion in the stand up comedy community because a, a lot of comics are trying to uh, game the algorithm. And you hear these discussions. Like I was talking to a friend of mine that was uh, telling me about these comics at the cellar that were having this conversation where they were trying to figure out, like, this is what you do to get the algorithm. This is what you do to, to go viral. This is what you do. And, and this comic who's like an established comic is like, this is fucking gross. I don't want to have any part of this. Like, why? Just, just make the best shit you can make. Like, don't do this. And so you, then you see people that become sort of uh, captured by this idea like you see there's some guys that are, that do it where it's like it's an art form like mr beast he's figured out how to do it in a way that's like really kind of fascinating because he really knows what words to use what images to use like and that there's a there's an actual science to it oh yeah he is a weird and interesting guy like watching his interview with lex mm -hmm. 
the way that his brain works, it's like everything is being processed through how does this play to the algorithm? Yeah. And it was it 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 slightly unnerved me a little bit. I think that, you know, I he just seemed like I, I got this sense he and he seems like a great guy and like super smart and you know, obviously, but it seems like he felt like, oh, I don't even necessarily know if this is worth my time to even be doing this interview right now because I don't know how many views it's going to get and I don't know like how it's going to play to the out. Because his time is so – he knows how much he can make every second of the day yeah. spending on a video. Mm -hmm. And like so if he's going to go do an interview with another smaller YouTuber, like that's impacting his – his rev right and i just I, I think that's dangerous to to let that control the content that you create it's backwards like you're, you're the, like the comic was saying it's like do yeah. do the thing that you do as as best as you can possibly do it don't make the algorithm like i guess you could if the algorithm is your thing if that's what you want to be the passion of your like i guess maybe some people do love it but yeah it seems a little bit inverted it's a little bit inverted, but that's also, I mean, he does so much good, and it's so interesting to watch him do the thing. I mean, I, I get it, because, like, his content is fantastic, so what he's trying to do is maximize the reach of his content, mm. and so it's just just clever. Oh, yeah, the, the blind, curing the blind people, I mean, that was, that we need more of that. What's wild is he got hate for that. Right. But what that, was the hate specifically? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. But it's just funny because you cannot do anything that won't piss someone off because people are engaged in recreational outrage and that's what they're doing. And they're trying to figure out an angle. Oh, this rich guy's doing this thing and really shouldn't even be rich. No one should be rich. And blah, 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 no. Oh, you're just trying to do this to make yourself look good. There's all these angles that people will take on things, which is their prerogative. And in a world of free speech, the the beauty of what, you know, is the nature of the First Amendment is that you should be able to express yourself. And so I su fully support those cunts to rag on him. For How many blind people have you cured? I mean, I like mean, they're allowed to have their perspective on it. And yeah, I mean, obviously that's the take. Like, you're not doing anything, so shut the fuck up. But people who aren't doing anything are also allowed to chime in on stuff yeah, yeah. and they can look petty and they can look foolish or they can have really good points subscribe to these influences today